Can you just put this on the other? Yeah, talk to everybody. Mm. Okay. So what's happening, y'all? You know, we've been working all day. Um, oh, this is so weird. You know, trying to be as productive as possible. Oh, I see Miss Alec Weck there. What's up, Alec? Alec Weck? That's my people's. Um, yeah, so again, the whole purpose of being on my live is to get inspired, to be productive, to find the light in the dark, to love. <laughs> doing a, an interview with me oh, God. for life. No Corona? No Corona? No Corona? Okay, hold on. Here you go. All right, that's our fault. Yeah, something happened with the technology. Can you hear us? We're back. We're back. Our bad. Can you hear? Oh, they're muted. You're muted. You're muted. You're muted. Can you guys? We are here. They're muted. They don't know they're muted. <laughs> Can you hear now? Do we have to oh, she said one second, one second. Oh, so anyway, they're getting their technology together now. So yeah, basically, we're in love for a living. You know, it's my Spanish queen right here. And she takes really good care of me. She inspires me to go fight so I can bring home the bacon vegan. Yes, and you bring home the bacon. All right. Thank you, vegan bacon. She said, shh. And telling me to be quiet. We can't hear you. You're looking like a silent movie. <laughs> looking like a silent movie. <laughs> 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 the audio is recorded. She don't talk. Oh. She's saying keep talking. Now you're saying keep talking? Is this, is this, is this, is this lip reading? I don't understand. The louder you go, the more I can hear. Here, I'll rejoin. Oh, oh here we back. Go. Yes. Yeah. Oh, my God. What? I was, I said, she said, save it. And I said, be quiet. And she said, keep talking. So I was very confused too. Well, I was just saying, you were saying good things. So I wanted to save it. Because, you know, cool. sometimes you can't recreate. Absolutely. Hello, hello, hello. Okay. How did you know we were saying good things? You was reading our lips? I can, we can hear you. you. I can hear you. Oh. 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 Spanish queen. Oh. So yeah, so. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Where do we stop? What are we talking about? Well, we still have the audio going. Yeah, so what we were talking right. about was how it's been, and I was saying how it's been relatively normal for us. Oh, you've been, uh, you've been, you've been, you've been social distancing for 15 years. Yeah, but, <laughs> but we can still work, and we still have our bubble, and it's been relatively the same because we structured our life like a vacation anyway. Mm -hmm. So this is actually the life we're living is the one we've been architecting for a while. Damon wants his life to always be by the pool. His office is the pool. By be. the pool? Yeah. I mean, every time, the more you talk, the more increasingly I want to be recruited to the tribe. This <laughs> sounds exactly like what I want. <laughs> Nobody's I mean, saying I, no. No one said no. <laughs> Nobody's and, saying no. I mean, honestly, it's very appealing at this point. The cuddle pockets, the vacation, the warm waters, the steam, the beautiful people over there. I mean, honestly, the good food, Rocky's cooking, the workout. Rocky's, oh, lots oh, of yeah. food. You yeah. cannot forget Rocky's delicious cooking. You can't Thank every you. day. Vegan, delicious vegan cooking at that. I'm like, and it's healthy, what the fuck? And, right. the, and the body is stupid. When I just look at the body all day, it's like, oh, good. And the body. And the body, and the body is stupid. stupid. I'm like, oh, God, geez, dang, you got the life I'd want to live. Yeah. I don't, I don't see why people wait till they retire and get old to live vacation or why they only go on vacation a couple of times a year. For me, the American dream independently is to be able to work two days a week and relax five. Uh, go on work for two, uh, you know, like three or four times a year, and in between that, be on vacation. And I don't see why you have to work during uncomfortable hours. It never made sense to me that we were supposed to be in a building behind a desk while the sun was out. That's not when things grow. And can, can, can you teach a class on that? Wait, can, I, I, can, <laughs> can you agree that the more you like vacation and doing leisure things like mushrooms and in the sun and in warm waters, those are when the creative juices begin to flow. That's when the creation begins, when you're in a comfortable space. So you're actually working by vacationing, but you're producing the best quality creative. Because Absolutely. You're room. Sorry, See, you're the, the, room. The, the, the way things are structured are to control us, to make us think we should be unhappy to get things done, and that's just simply not the case. And if you notice, even when you come to the gallery, I'm like, you know, that's why I call it a gallery, because it shouldn't feel like work. 
We all smoke in. It's like a party and we're capturing those moments. Just like you said, you can't recreate moments. And that's basically what pure entertainment is, is capturing authentic moments, not, you know, recreating. And that's what most people have to do because I live that rock star life. I don't have to recreate a rock star life. I just have to run the cameras because I'm around intelligent people. All we have to do is have ideas in the moment and make them into tangible things and then go monetize them, package them, distribute them, and then make some bread. And if you can make things that give you residual income, then you can truly sit by the pool while the things that you were doing younger, you reap the, you get the, uh, reap the benefits and the fruit of that 10, 20 years later. And that's a lot of what I'm doing now. I'm able to relax and do things as I want, when I want, because I work so hard on the front end to have ownership and things that would give me residual income. And then I choose to take that income and invest it into things that are also my passion, which is my work. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. <laughs> I'm in church. Yeah. You know, Dame, just, I, re I remember when I first met you, and I don't even know if you remember meeting me this time, because actually we were reintroduced through my cousin, Davida. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Davida. But I actually met you when I was um, personal assisting Macy Gray. Oh, and so shit. Yeah, I was Macy Gray's personal assistant. And That's crazy. That's my, that was my homie. Yeah, and so I worked with her for three and a half years. And so um, I came to Poppington at the time. And I think you were, I don't Wait, know how long, like, you, were, you had just kind of opened it. Was it, was I, it the, I think it was DD-172. It might have been DD-172. Because that's the, when she came. Oh, no, that's when it was. Yeah. That's yeah. when it was. Yeah, 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 yeah that's man. crazy. Yeah, that's crazy. That's I probably have that on tape. I, you probably do. I, I, we were there, we're chilling, and I just it? remember, like, was, was a, what, what? what was going on when you were there? Was Erica Badu coming around? I think we were like upstairs. Was there an upstairs? Yes. No, she said we with events. Up, what, was, what was, was happening? Was Erica Badu an event? No. Uh, no I, think she, I remember she came. Chilling. I remember we were sitting. We were sitting right I before. Remember all, I remember when she was there too. I remember. That's crazy. That is crazy. I wow. know. And I remember being like, oh my God, that's Damon Dash. Oh my God. <laughs> he, he, how does his brain work so fast? He's talking... Like he has so many things he's talking about and he's so passionate about so many different things and they all connect. And I'm just like, I just remember sitting there because, you know, Macy, she's so chill. I was, I was so used to just being around. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Energy. And then we went in there and it was like, and I was like, wow. Whoa. And I think it was towards the evening that you guys came too. I think it was the evening and like you had a desk. I think you were sitting behind the desk. We were sitting on the other side of the desk and there were a few people there. And I remember Rocky, you were there. Yes, I, I remember um, Macy Gray. Yeah. I remember that so whole... So that had to be like, I don't know, 10 years ago? Definitely. Mm -hmm. And You're then my cousin Davida tape. then reconnected us when I moved to New York. And I came to your gallery, Poppington Gallery. You always had like the dopest parties and everyone was just like smoking weed, listening to music dope ass art like you had some of the dopest artists in new york mm -hmm. there and i was just like i remember i was like because did you have me knowing some random people i'm like how the fuck do you know name and that um and she connected us and you know the rest is history we've been cool ever since yeah um but watching you like even in those moments like watching you how your brain works and how you come up with ideas and execute them because you execute everything you do. Yes. Gotcha. And you, like, there's no limit. Like, it's really, it's an amazing thing to watch. And I know, and I'm Rocky, I see, like, I think, I see the way you think too. Like, there's no limit. You guys just have an idea and you execute it and you do it and you do everything on your own, um, which is so dope because, you know, a lot of times we feel like we need people to do things, like yeah. creating projects or whatever yeah. it may be. Yeah. So. Damon's one person that likes to learn every thing, single thing. So he'll like, dive into something just to learn how it works. I like being the plug. Mm -hmm. I don't like being a Johnny. So if I could grow it, I'd rather grow it than be a customer, you know? Absolutely, man. So we have a game that we like to play with guests, and it's called Trigger. Oh, and great. basically, we say a word, and you have to say the first thing that comes to your mind. Trigger. Like, don't hesitate, first thing. Okay. And just a quick way for our listeners to kind of get to know you guys better and us to get to know you better, too. Um, so I guess we'll go on and off. Like, I'll ask you one, Dame, and then Rocky, you, you answer the other one. Okay. Got it? I'm, like, nervous. This, <laughs> I'm <pretty> nervous. <laughs> this is trigger. This is trigger. Okay, so I'll start with you, Dame. Marriage. Vagina. <laughs> Vagina? <laughs> Love. Rocky. Damon. Favorite sex position? Oh, shit. That's yours. With Rocky? Doggy. <laughs> doggy. Oh, doggy. Doggy. 
She's like donkey. Don I have a couple other ones, but they're like black belt stuff. We have to talk later. Black belt. Oh wow. Maybe like a like we needed. A wow. Okay. And I have to explain. Guy? Instructional guy. Okay. Basically. Can't wait. <laughs> Boxes or briefs. Boxes. Oh, that's from me. Oh, oh. 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 Well, well, I like, I like, he, I, well, can I say boxer briefs? Yeah, boxer briefs. <laughs> oh. Reality TV. <laughs> you asking me? Yeah. <laughs> Docu-series. How about we, how about each of you answer the questions? Because make it easier. Okay. 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 Rocky, uh, trouble. <laughs> Docu-series. <laughs> I just said trouble. What's your vice? Puss, uh, vagina. Oh, shit. Obviously, like, uh, big black man. <laughs> I vice. I don't know. I gotta think. What's it? Okay, vice. Can we come back to that one and say what? waffles. Oh, yeah. Right okay. now, yeah. Okay. Right now, it's Eggo waffles. Right now, it's Eggo waffles. But Before yeah. vice was me. But then she got, you know. <laughs> now, now you got Eggo waffles. Bigger, bigger, more important things. Um, bad habits. Bad habit. Uh, sometimes I ash, not on ash in the ashtray, it would be ashing around. That's a very annoying habit. Mm -hmm. Not answering directly. Mm. Uh, kids. Love. Excitement. Monogamy. Bad business. <laughs> uh, does it exist? <laughs> no, it doesn't exist. What, what did I say? She said, does it exist? Does it exist? Okay. Race. Human. Yeah. Human, I agree. Viagra. Blue. When there's more than one or two, sometimes you have to pop it. <laughs> 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 I appreciate that honesty. Weed. All day, every. Surplus. I'm staring at it right now. <laughs> LA. Good weather. Sunshine. New York. Cold weather in a river. Stink river. Damp. Stink river. <laughs> Stink river. <laughs> Social media. Um, uh, very good distribution. Great for business. Uh, time consuming. Divorce. It's not happening over here. It causes, I don't know, uh, stress for people. <laughs> it causes stress. That's all I see. Lawyers. That's Lawyers, what I, the, money. Lawyers, that's what divorce is. Money. Expensive? Expensive. <laughs> not really. Depending on how you do it. Emotion. Obama. Class act. The, pre the president. Happily ever after. Oh. My life and with Rocky. Disney Damon, yes. Disney Damon? Oh. Disney and Damon. so cute. Um, <laughs> three subs. All day, every, love them. When I could get one. <laughs> when I get lucky, when I can get so lucky. What is it? Wait, I'm just smacking. Oh, oh my, he's my like. That was Rocky's behind. I'm thinking, <laughs> I'm thinking about that doggy you was talking about. <laughs> don't, don't, do don't do that. My sound is. Oh, we should mad at her audio. We're recording. <laughs> that was good. That was good thinking. You Trump. guys are smart. Pa pardon? Trump. Wait, um, she didn't answer about three sons. Oh, three sons, right? Oh, I said, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Trump. Funny guy. Bright orange. The biggest regret. Do I have regrets? My biggest regret is uh, not making making Aaliyah. I should I should have got a little madder about her getting on that plane because she didn't want to get on it. So that that's when I should have turned up the asshole. Pause. I should have been like, Nah, don't get on that. You should have told her not to get on. I did tell her not to get on it. Biggest regret. I just wasn't so forth like I wasn't so forceful about it. I should have been more dang dash about it. Hmm. For me, my biggest regret of uh, not learning a second language. Um, not too late. Yeah. Mushrooms. Love. What Love. kind? Love them all. <laughs> oh. Love. Love them all. <laughs> Black women. Love. Yes. Love. White women. I love, love. all women, but no butt. Flat butt. No, I think flat <laughs> you think butt. Flat but butt. I love all women. No flat butt. No flat butt. No flat butt. I mean, I don't. If I have, it depends. If they're compensating, I'm. I don't really like the flat butt, so I don't like a flatty patty so much, no. Stepmom. Uh, no, I would, I would call that, what'd you call that? Step Mom plus. plus? Mom plus. Mom plus. 
What about, how do you feel about Mom Plus, Stepmom? I like Mom Plus. Stepmom, I feel like, has been tarnished by, like, Disney Studios and into this evil stepwoman. So the word is hard for me mm. because I am one. Gay. There's a lot of gays. Not me. Nicola. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly. Clearly. It depends on, it's, it's your choice. Freedom. Pregnancy. Amazing. Blessing. Yeah. To be appreciated. Favorite porn category? Lesbian. Lesbian? <laughs> Lesbian? Well, at least you guys agree on that. Yes. It's yeah. true love right there. It's true love. <laughs> I agree on the porn category. Yeah. Loyalty. Having an understanding and agreeing to it like a contract. Yeah, loyalty. Same thing for you, Rock? Having Loyalty is respect. Yeah, re more res loyalty is respect for me and just... um giving the person what they give you uh cheating this shouldn't exist once you got to cheat then that's not your best friend no more you don't lie to your best friend heartache it's a pain in the ass uh kanye my little brother kanye easy i don't know my little brother <laughs> my little brother fatherhood all that counts mm -hmm. damon my dad Child childhood Fun. Oh Jesus. Childhood. Hey, this is a lot, girl. <laughs> Love fun. <laughs> what the fuck are all these words you got over here? What kind of... It's like so much more. Okay, wait. I'm going to... You know, <laughs> when I think about childhood, I think about so many people that never... That, that, that stay children their whole life. That, that don't know what adults are. There's a time and a place for childhood. Like, childhood is a people, blessing, some though, for some people. Fuck up. Yeah, some people have to grow up too fast, and some people don't grow up. So childhood is... For me, I had a great childhood, and I'm fortunate for that. Okay, I have a few more. Wealth. Happiness health. and health. Health. And laughter. Th therapy. Important. Mental. It's hard sometimes. Th but th therapy means identifying your triggers and dealing with them. Which is this, triggers. Talking sometimes too much, which is hard. Um, Becky with the good hair. <laughs> why, why, you, why can't I see you, Rocky? I need to see you in, in this shot. A dumbass. Dumbass. R. Kelly. Child molester. Agreed. And last but not least, anal sex. Wrap it all up. When I get lucky. <laughs> Pain. Well, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> It's, it's, you know, it's not. It's a process. Put it like that. <laughs> it's a process. Mom, I swear, I hope you never listen to this. <laughs> You're welcome. You're all your business on the internet. Right? Thank you. It's definitely not all our business. <laughs> uh, I know. I'm sure there's plenty more. There's a lot of more. I know. So, Rocky, it's good. So, you are. A, what is it? What'd you call yourself? A, mo a plus, plus mom. mom. A plus mom. Mm -hmm. Mom plus mom. Mom plus. plus. So, obviously, we have really young children. We haven't. You're. You haven't ventured into that world yet of right. having a partner and introducing kids and stuff. How how has it been? Because I know Dame, your kids are you know older, like a little older. So you have teenagers and all those things that you're navigating in that space. I know I was a bitch ass teenager. So and I was not nice to like my stepfather. <laughs> it was nice to no one. I was just no. I was. Nice. I mean, when um, you, you become a teenager, there's a certain tolerance because you understand that. Well, I was a teenager, so I kind of know what I was acting like. I, I thought I knew ev everything until I was about 23, and then I realized I knew nothing. Um, and I thought my parents were, I thought my parents weren't as smart as me. I thought everything. So once the, it depends on the kid, but once it's like 14 to 16, once they hit that mark, you know, you kind of just have to just have a tolerance for what they're going to do because it's just you're just waiting for them to grow up because i and i can't i they're too old for you to do anything she, she was in a situation where the the emotion was clear because you know sometimes people are snarky about their feelings it wasn't no snark we knew exactly where the energy was wrong and where it was coming from so we were able to deal with it mm -hmm. without it being a surprise. So yeah. when, when you know something's coming and you could brace your face, it don't hurt so bad. Yeah, true. So everything we knew was coming, we already talked about it in a very therapeutic way. 
And we already knew what people were trying to do, pull our triggers. And that's the one thing. Once you can identify when people are trying to pull your triggers, you can deflect. And that's what we would do. We would take the, we would, she would learn how to laugh at the stupidity. And that's what would make the other parties very upset. And that's why, oh, she, and that's why how she How long have you and Rocky been together? You've been together now for like over 10 years, right? Yeah. Like in, yeah, well, we've been around each other for 10 years, every like 12, single, 12, 11, 12. 11 years, 12 years? Well, since well, 2009. 12. 12. Yeah. 12. Yeah. 12. Okay. 12 well, years. What do you think that you've learned, like, if you could, like, what, what is the biggest lesson you've learned about being a plus mom? Because you've been not, you've been one for a long, a, a, a good amount of time as a, as a young woman, too, you know, and trying to, and navigating that space. I'm curious, like, for, for me, what's been your biggest lesson? For me, I try not to interfere with teaching the kids lessons but having fun with them more or less because I'm not their blood parent and I don't want to ever interfere with being their mom or being their dad or being like you know someone that's scolding or somebody that's doing that so I would never interfere with that part but for me I get to have all the fun it's like for me I feel like Tallulah thinks I'm more of an aunt than anybody because we just like she's the one that teaches them how to take pictures teaches them how to paint teaches them about music will set up their dance like, she's the one that makes sure they get all the girly shit that I would not be paying attention to. Yeah, I get to have the fun. That, that's what I feel like is the best part about um, being, like, a plus mom is... Like, she's not trying kinda, to be a mom. She's more like a sister, like a big sister. Yeah. Like and, an aunt, like she said. Like, an aunt that, like a, a, sister that, a big sister that tells you what to do when you got a line. Yeah, but, well, but, but never I, I never really... I have never... Scolding is not ever anything I've ever had to do or I mean, something I can't like imagine that. In the entire twelve years it doesn't, doesn't come one incident where maybe the parents blood parents not around and you're like, hey, uh uh-uh. uh. You know, like you gotta some it's never ever I like, mean it's, not- I'm it's always there. It, yeah, he's always there and it's uh it you're it's always not, there. It's not that kind it's not like there's the like visiting step because my kids visit which is bad, mm-hmm. which is why I look forward to having a child with Raquel. So when I see my children, it's intense time with me and my children. Right. You know, and then when I'm giving them too much or not enough, she's right there to make sure they're always occupied and entertained or doing things, the girly stuff that I honestly don't don't know how to do. I mean, it'll be like conversations, but it's never, I can't. Cooking, a lot of cooking. Yeah, it's, cook, it's more like Painting. conversations and telling them my opinion, but I can't. I don't feel like I'm obligated or I don't feel that I'm in the position to actually, um, my kids ain't bad. Like yeah. That. Right. Like, my kids do stupid shit when they're adults, when they're kids, they're great. But once they're adults, that's when they do dumb shit. They're not kids no more. Yeah. And so that's when, yeah, Damn, when... I don't really know much about like how you grew up and like, I don't know if you had your father in the house or like. Mm-hmm. If, if you grew up with, with, uh, you know, what was I, your example? And, and, yeah. What was your example of fatherhood? I, you know, I had the, I had the old school now, pops that, parent. you know, he got married when I was young, remarried, and that's one more weekend. And uh, my mom was the entrepreneur and made things happen. And, you know, my pops wasn't really so present. You know what I mean? So and then when my mother died when I was six, 16, I had to grow up relatively fast. You know what I mean? But, like, I was on some drug dealer shit. So, and I've been an adult for a while. You know, my adulthood came fast, but not through so much trauma just through wanting to be independent. You so you'd when your dad when your mom passed, you didn't go live with your dad? You did your own. No, nah, it wasn't even thing. an option for me. You know what I mean? Which was fucked up. And it was that those are the type of fucked up things that he would do. That if I let it define me, it would have probably made me a bad parent, but it made me a better one. You know what I mean? Right. So I'm the type of person like, you know, a, a, a two two brothers could have an alcoholic as a father, and one could be an alcoholic, and he'll say it's because my father was an alcoholic, mm-hmm. and the other brother will say I don't drink because my father was an alcoholic. So I always try to find the light, not the dark. He's not. I don't take people's bad habits. I take their good ones, and then I learn from their bad habits and make sure my children don't have to feel the same pain. So I can imagine what made me uncomfortable when I was young. What made me uncomfortable when I was young was that my father would have presents for my little brother because he was with my little brother's mother. And I'd be there for Christmas and he'd have presents and I wouldn't have no presents. That made me feel like shit. So I would never let that happen to my kids, ever. Yeah. So, is it, so then it's important, I mean, because I know you have, um, you, had a, you, have, you have three kids with, you have four kids and then with three different women, right? So it's important that they, it's important for you that your kids are, are close. Is that like something that you like prioritize or just kind of happens or like? 
for people that do have multiple kids with, diff with different people, like, I wonder, like, is that hard to balance? It is hard. Like, to, it's hard to balance when the mothers aren't cooperating or, you know, they're not on the same sheet of paper or when the mothers are still in love with you. You know what I mean? That doesn't work out. So that's where my struggle's been. I'm a hard drug to kick, you know? And, you know, I'm trying my best to keep my family together. And sometimes it seems like people are trying their best to not have them together or keep it one-sided. So I just make sure my children know that I want to be in their lives and it's their choice that they're not when they aren't. But anytime they can, they can come at any time. I want them, I'll come get them. They know that, I call them. I'm the one that does, like, you know that the father usually be the, usually be the kids looking for the dad? When the dad's looking for the kids, the kids ignore the dad. They curve, they, they, it's, it's crazy. Aww. They curve the dad. But at least I'm doing my, I mean, I'm occupied, so I'm like, I'm good. Y'all can keep thinking it hurt me if you want it, don't. But, you know, I'm good. But I'm still going to do my job. That's why I'm always up the block for my daughters. I came to L.A. because my daughters, you know, Rachel moved to L.A. out of like, left, and I had to do it, liquidate everything and come out here. And as soon as he can have all the kids together, he makes it a priority, though. Is, yeah. As soon as they can be in one room. But it's been harder since they got older. Older and since we moved to two different coasts. It hasn't been the easiest. Yeah. Um, were you at any of the births of your kids? Like, did you see all of them? All of them but all lucky. Of them. All of them but one, because I didn't know he was mine. Oh. Um, what do you, like, how, what, what was your favorite, not your favorite birth story, but like, how did experiencing birth firsthand change your perspective on women and vagina and did it change at all? Did you have any terrible experiences, a great experience? Was it life changing? I mean, I saw my first vagina explode when I was about 20. <laughs> did he explode? <laughs> Can we just make it a little more magical? What you a little more explode? magical. <laughs> it's a little bit more magical, a little more better than that. You know, I, cu I cut my first umbilical when I was 20, you know? I just, the best moments is that you're the first person they see. I like that a lot. And then y'all just lock eyes and shit for a while. So I've had that connection with all my children. Where we just have that eye lock. It's like, you know, they know I'm their daddy as soon as they come out. Aww. Aww. Mm -hmm. um, did, did it scare you? Did it change your perspective on women witnessing that at 20? And did witnessing it again and again? Yeah. I mean, knowing what women go through, that, and, you know, I don't know that I would ever do that to my body to create another life. Um... <laughs> You know, it definitely makes me, I, you know, I'm the one that says it. I'm a firm believer that women are God. They're the only things that create life. And that's the closest thing to God. Mm -hmm. So I just feel like it's been like a big, like, you know, men that were created to just be slaves for women so that the women can create life because that's more important than anything. And I think men, a man's world is all fucked up. Like, look at us now. And even down to like, you look at the countries that are being, um, that are doing the best with Corona are run by women. So... You know, I think it's been this big jake that, you know, men have taken their physical and, and made it like they're the ones that are running shit just because they're insecure. And that's why I don't su surround myself with men so, so much because they're all looking for a mommy. I'm, women are strong. I see that women have to raise children by themselves. You know, if a woman's in a compromising situation, she can't just start swinging. She has to use her brain and, and her energy to get out of there. So... You know, as I've gotten older and look at the things that women have to deal with, especially birth and creating, my respect level is definitely going, you know, yeah, yeah. like 10, 10, 15 years ago, I apologized for Big Pimpin', you know? It was like that. And that was not, and, <laughs> and that was before the Me Too movement. I did that 10 years before Me Too. I was like, yo, I was bugging. I told my, my son, I better never catch you doing that type of shit. I was tripping, you know? So, and also having daughters, I think, changed Having a daughter has really changed things, man. Yeah. Because it becomes karma. Like, my daughter now, Ava, is straight karma, man. Straight karma. <laughs> Why do you say she's straight karma? Because she wants to walk around in a bikini, and she wants to. Uh, she likes to play with me and shit. You know what I mean? It's like, she knows what makes me uncomfortable. You know what I mean? Well, she's a woman. Damn. I mean, so she's she, a So woman. she should know to bring over some shorts. I don't want to see a thong with my daughter. You know what I'm saying? Period. <laughs> I don't want to see that. I don't want to see, I don't want to see, I'm not saying that she's wrong, I'm saying she's karma, I, you know what I mean? So, you know, I'm not, I don't, I don't get mad, I just be like, damn, having beautiful daughters is definitely karma. It was really funny when she was like, you know, 12 and she was trying to wear the swim trunks, he could, at that time, give her the long board shorts like to board put on. Shorts, and she would be like, no, but... He could demand it at that time, but not now, anymore. Now, Those days are over. Days are and, and then when you teach them things, they take it to another level. So I taught her some Dame Dash shit, and she's, like, trying to use it on me, and I'll be like... <laughs> well, you know, that's interesting that you say that, because, you know, we asked you on Trigger about 
like for example monogamy and you both guys you both obviously have you know views on that that you know doesn't really exist and it's not we're we're, we're, monog- we're, we're, a, we're a couple that doesn't cheat on each other for sure living with